Hey guys, uh, our beloved Tangaroa is uh, up for sale and uh, we thought we'd better finally give you a little bit of a walkthrough. Uh, I'm sure many of the people that have seen our videos wanted this years ago and we never really had the opportunity. Uh, the boat's empty and we've cleaned all our gear out. Um, we're just on a different tack for a few years so uh, we thought we'd put her on the market and hopefully someone else could take her on an adventure. Uh, she's a great little adventure catamaran and um, as far as worms go, she's a beautiful build. Um, yeah, so we're going to give you a little walk through and show you some of the bones and some of the ins and outs of the boat. Um, right now we're sitting in the starboard hull. We've got it set up as the galley. Uh, both the hulls are pretty well identical uh, builds. Uh, when Alan, guy in Adelaide, built it, he, built it, he launched it in 2012. It was the second, uh, funnily enough, it was the second Tangaroa he'd built in his life. And uh, so I like to think that he had a bit of practice on the first one and this one he's uh, really nailed because it's a beautiful build. You can see the workmanship. He was a cabinet maker by trade. So um, he had plenty of uh, um, skill uh, in, in working with wood and, and uh, building such a boat. So yeah, like I said, we've got this side set up as a galley. Um, it's really, really simple, so, and we've tried to keep it that way. So you spend more time sailing than you do uh, fixing things, but like you can see, we've got a metho stove and an ingle uh, fridge, a simple 12 volt system on the boat that runs the electronics. So a uh, really basic setup. Uh, cabinetry, all these, uh, all the cupboards are all just pull outs. So, really straightforward. Um, plenty of storage under the seats. The hulls are uh, not only fully glass and epoxy, West System epoxy on the outside, but it's all West System epoxy on the inside as well. So, um, she's uh, sound. You won't find uh, a lot of people worry about a bit of rot in these things. Uh, you won't find any rot in the hulls in this boat, all the beams. Uh, the beams are solid, um, Oregon laminated and all the bones of the boat are all uh, Oregon as well, which was sourced from a, this is a nice story about the, about the timber. He sourced it all from a, um, a warehouse in, it was in Port Adelaide, the warehouse, and um, the warehouse was used for storing merino wool. So I like to think that there's a bit of lanolin in the timber, but there probably isn't, but it's a nice story all the same. Um, so yeah, really good timber. Um, if I take you up into this, this is the starboard forward bunk. I've got no mattress in here at the moment. So I can sit up in here quite comfortably. Um, and then obviously under the bunk there's plenty of storage and I can show you down in there. And you can see the amount of epoxy that's been used. So she's well sealed. Uh, and cleaned out. You can see the build. It's pretty dark at the moment in the boat because we have all, we're up in the tropics so we've got all the windows uh, blacked out with our foil to try and reduce some of the heat in the hulls. Alright, here we are on the, uh, on the back deck of Tanga. Uh, Plenty of, obviously you can see there's plenty of flat deck to lay around on. Um, we just have a full drive awning at the back for shade. Solar panel on the davit. We use the davit for uh, lifting the little eight horsepower that you see covered up here. That's the tender engine. Um, that doesn't usually live there. That's sitting on the, um, the main, main sheet traveler. Engine usually sits on the davit at the back. We've just got it stored in this way. Um, the pod. The pod, you, anyone that follows us would have seen the build of the pod. I built this guy myself. Um, it's all West Systems epoxy, um, gaboon ply, so it's really good ply. Um, the pods uh, got a, a double, like a small boat double, I suppose you'd call it, and um, carries all the electronic gear. So we've got two house batteries in the pod here, 200 amp hour AGMs, which are next to new, they're one season old. We bought them prior to our Kimberley trip last year. Um, clears on the back, it's really simple and light. Um, fly screens, you can open the forward the forward window so you can get full ventilation through the through the pod when you're sleeping. So, nice 
nice and cool in there uh, up here in the tropics um, all the solar gears all the red art gear so it's all top gear um, also inside here we've got our Vespa Marine AIS Iridium Go sat phone Ray Marine Electronics uh, autopilot um, switchboards VHF radio uh, it's all it's all good gear you know like when we fitted anything out on this boat we, we kind of buy good gear because we want it to last so I'm six foot tall I built this boat for me so I can lie in here quite comfortably it's actually probably got enough for six one really and Hannah and I get in here quite comfortably it's not a massive double bed but it's yeah it's definitely bigger than the singles in the rest of the hull so it works quite well full fly screens on the front window so you can get full ventilation being out, out of the bugs in the tropics uh, this is where our iridium go sat phone lives uh, vhf radio stereo system fusion speakers also um house battery bank which is ventilated out to the open air at the front um so you got two bosch uh, 100 amp hour AGM deep, so deep cycle batteries and then there's two batteries forward which are the starter batteries for the engine you can take this center mattress out and there's like a u-shaped seat in here all storage under the seats uh, pigeonhole lockers up the front here for storing knickknacks yeah and it's a really nice place to sit when you're uh, sailing at night and you're on night watch and you can do a swap over like Han will be on the helm and I can be sleeping in here keeping an eye on her um, and then vice versa if, she, if we want to swap it out uh, she's in here and we're really close to each other so it makes you feel really safe at sea and um, it's kind of a really nice addition to the boat uh, we sailed across the bight in Tangaroa in the Great Australian Bight um, Southern Ocean and we were open bridge deck so uh, we, were, we wish we had this when we were doing that because uh, we we're pretty exposed and out in the weather and this was a game changer building the pod uh, it was like adding a room on a house, it was... Um, it's been the best. It's a really nice addition to the boat and it sort of just changed uh, the livability of the boat, I suppose. Um, and yeah, no, we couldn't have... Uh, it, was, it was definitely worth the effort of uh, doing the refit that year in Shark Bay and, and she's a, a beautiful little addition to the boat. It makes it a great little boat. The ability goes with this boat, it's a really nice steering position, you got really good visual. Um, I really like to st steer from up here or up here. Uh, you get good visual of the reef um, when you're going through tight reef passes you get some nice high view um, also the main sheets right here so the person driving handle the main sheet quite it's quite a easy boat to sail it's like a giant hobie cat if anyone sailed hobie cats the head saw sheet winch is right here so you can do everything from the helm position and sail the boat from here quite easily yeah this little steering wheel in front this steers the single outboard. We've got a 20 horsepower Yamaha. 20 horsepower Yamaha outboard. It pushes her along. Uh, we like to cruise at four to five knots when we're there, but we've got, with a clean bum, we've got like six and a half, seven knots out of her. So pushes along quite well. She's a better sailboat than she is a motorboat. And we sail her. She sails amazingly in uh, tight spaces and even in light air, we sail really well. So. Um, the motor's purely just an auxiliary for getting in and out of uh, anchorages and marinas. The rest of the time we're sailing. Um, but yeah, the centre steering wheel steers the outboard, um, which is great for a catamaran having a single engine. Uh, you can direct your thrust straight over a rudder and it really kicks the bum of the boat around and, um, and helps you manoeuvre in tight spaces. Okay, so this is how you raise and lower the engine. We'll pull it out of the water and lower it back down. Here we are in the uh, port stern rear locker compartment. There's a bulkhead uh, right through here. This is where the port after bed or berth finishes. Um, and then you've got a locker. It's, it's quite a large locker. You can fit a lot of gear down here. We like to put uh, all our dive gear and fishing gear and stuff that you kind of want to access nice and easily down here. But uh, I'll get down to show you kind of the size of it. A lot of other Warren builds, they might put a, a head down in a, in a space like this. 
But we've just kept this boat really simple, so we just like to keep it uh, cup to, like to keep it nice and light and empty. So, um, but yeah, I can get down in here. I can sit down in here. That's the size of it to give you a little bit of a gist. Um, you can see all the bones of the boat down here. Beautiful timber work, fully epoxied on the inside. So she's really sound hulls. Uh, as far as the build goes of the boat, the hulls are kind of both identical you know, inside, forward and back. There's a locker at the stern, there's a locker forward. Um, on both hulls, uh, they're all pretty well the same. We just store different gear in them. <laughs> so here we are, we're going down in the port, port hull. We used to use this as, we call it our side, but uh, this is where Han and I originally started um, uh, sleeping and, and living. Uh, and we had the galley set up on the starboard hull. So here we are down in the port hull. Uh, as you can see, there's a single bunk forward. Uh, there's a single bunk aft also. Both the bunks are the same size. Uh, I'm gonna go get up in this one. So right here is one of the, what you gotta duck under here is, this is what, where one of the beams is, uh, one of the beam runs through this area. So, um, so it drops down quite a little bit in here, but once you get in under that, you can sit up inside the bunk. Uh, I'll get up in there and show you. So I'm sitting upright in the bunk here. Is it pretty dark on there? No, it's not too bad. I can uh, get my trusty head torch here. So got shelving up top. So we like to store books and, and stuff. Um, you can see the, all the deck work up the top there, it's all Oregon, Gaboon ply and epoxied, so it's really quite well made, like, and we haven't done anything to this since we uh, had the boat, like, internally in the hull, it's pretty much as it was when I bought it, so it's in really good shape still. Always been maintained and clean, and we've looked after her the best we can over the years. Same again in here. Same lockers as in the starboard hull, galley side, pullouts. We got all the uh, binos, spotlights, uh, Iridium Go gear, um, handheld VHF flares, V sheets. Um, chessboard, plans for the boat, the boat build, charts, slide lockers here, rod racks, curtains, storage under the seats, uh, pigeon holes, and uh, LED lights throughout the hulls. So. Little LED lights that are really nice. I'll give you a nice light at night. So uh, here we have my Warham Design self-steering wind vane, which is which was a little side project when I was building the pod. So I can't say that I have completely tweaked and finished it, but I've got the plans on board and they'll come with the boat. But yeah, she I'd say she's 95%. Uh, complete it just needs some uh, fine tuning and testing this center cog here I made myself with a little homemade lathe I made so like my basically the the issue that I was having uh, with the with the system was was this cog it needs to be turned up on a proper lathe with a deeper channel to hold the lines because they kept slipping out so so yeah I'd say she's 95% complete here's the blade one of the one of the vein blades for it um, and yeah, the plan, like I said, the plans, the plans for it will come with the boat. So if anyone wants to play with that, we also have a, um, like the little Raymarine electronic autopilot, um, with a little tiller, whoop, tiller ram. Um, so that's always stored away when it's not in use. So that's another, so you've got a couple of options for steering the boat. So, aft bunk. 
same again um, you can sneak up in there ocean pro life jackets good gear with uh, my got harness built-in harness um, so we've got two of them and then we've got there's plenty of other life jackets on board I've got them stuffed up uh, up in the other lockers and I think we've got I think I think on the itinerary I put um, what did I put six four or six or something on there, more. But I think there's more than that on board so I've stuffed them right up in the up in, and up, up in the stern and the bow um, in the tight spaces so if you end up having uh, a bit of a party. bit of a party <laughs> on board and a few extra heads there's uh, plenty of life jackets around so you should be legal um, but yeah these are the two main ones that we'd use for uh, Hannah and I when we were sailing and then there's a few other life jackets in the bunks which are um, if you've got guests on board and then there's plenty yeah like I said tucked away Uh, for you sailors out there, I hope you don't think that this is my running rigging, Telstra rope. All my running rigging's been uh, freshwater washed and stored dry up in the forward lockers, which I'll show you shortly. So uh, all this running rigging's just, just pulled through lines so we can pull the, the real running rigging through. Um, we've got two engine starter batteries forward. All the batteries can be interlinked so you can run and the engine will charge all four or you can just have them separated another forward locker here same again this one's full though guys so we've got uh i've got some heavy mooring lines and some fuel jerrys in this guy um but it's basically it's pr pretty well the same size as the stern locker uh, on this side um might be a little bit longer the, the bow's a little bit a little bit longer across the starboard bow. So this is a starboard bow locker. Same again. I've got all my sails stored away in here. So we've got a spinner car. Everything, all my, all my sails have been, uh, we, prior to storing the boat, we had them all rinsed and uh, dry and we store, we try and store everything away back in its bags. And so it's all been looked after over the years. So pretty much, as far as the sails go, the newest sail on the boat is the working jib. Look at that made, so that's nice and, still nice and crisp. Still nice crisp sail. Uh, we've got the mainsail, was new with the boat built. So it's the same age as the boat, but it's always been stored well, so it's still nice and crisp. It's got plenty of life in it. Um, The stay is also new with the boat, so it's still got the same age as the main, still got plenty of life. It's nice and crisp. Uh, it's a good little sail we use. We use that kind of like our little storm sail too. So if we're in sort of heavy weather, we just run the, the stay sail and a, a reef down main. So um, that works really well. They're all hanked on, so they're all really simple to use and no complicated systems. Uh, the oldest sail on the boat is the Genoa. And it's a really beautifully cut sail, and it's a great sail. It's still got plenty of life in her, but she's, you can just see, like, from the new to the old, this is the oldest sail on the boat. Um, it's got plenty of life in her, and she's a really beautifully cut sail. Yeah, it served us quite well, and I've never torn it or anything like that. I've just uh, a few minor repairs and some little nicks, but, uh, yeah, no, no major damage to the sail at all. It's just... Uh, yeah, like I said, it's just the old, the older sail on the boat, so you can compare to the new, new newer ones. Yep. We're in the forward bow here, where we store sails. Um, all the running rigging's in here. It's all been freshwater rinsed and stored really nicely. It's uh, all still really soft and been well looked after. It's all been out of the sun, so uh, if it's not in use, we generally store it quite well. There's plenty of lines in here. Up here in the tropics, there's enough rope if you have to ever tie up in the mangroves for you're running from a cyclone or something yeah so there's plenty of lines in there all the running rigging all your docking lines painters for the tender ski ropes you name it it's up in the bow there uh, there's life jackets right up forward uh, another awning for the for the king's awning at the back which is a shade thing uh, we've got that set up so you can it's quite easily to use forward here we got the uh, Tramps, 
um, hand knife, and thread of these tramps are beautiful to walk on. Um, unfortunately, we're probably going to have to pull these guys apart to redo the front beam, but um, that's just the way it is. And it's just uh, th this uh, aluminium mast section here. I bought, I found this, um, which is actually perfect for the front beam rebuild. So my idea with the front beam. Uh, those of you that don't know, yeah, we've damaged the front beam, so there's a video on that, uh, one of our videos, but uh, it's a bit unfortunate, it's, the repair job's strong, and I can show you that um, after, so the boat still sails as is with it, um, but definitely um, something that needs to be looked at um, in the future for myself or uh, potential someone who would like to take the boat on, um, but yeah, basically sourced uh, the material for the new front beam, this bit of mast section, she's a beauty. Uh, it's a pretty new piece of mast section, um, which we're looking at uh, replacing the Oregon front beam with. Uh, it's a laminated Oregon front beam, and we're just thinking uh, we're going to make it a little bit lighter and stronger with this piece of mast section, uh, which would be really nice. So I've got two anchor lockers here on deck. It's nice. The, the deck up the up forward here is really flat, so it's a really usable deck. Uh, you walk around at sea, and uh, we like to lay around on bean bags um, wherever the wherever the shade is from the from the sails. You get plenty of shade from once you got all your sails up, and um, you can move around this flat deck quite easily. Uh, as you can see, you could probably um, play play tennis up here or something. I don't know. But uh, yeah, anyway, two nice size anchor lockers. Uh, all the anchor gear's packed up onto the boat, stowed away. But uh, this is where we keep our anchors and road. So yeah, I'll show you the anchor gear, which is under the boat. But um, this is where it lives. So here we are underneath Tangaroa. Uh, as you can see, the beams, these guys are solid Oregon. Uh, not solid, sorry, they're laminated. They are solid beams, but they're, uh, it's laminated Oregon and then fiberglass so um, all the beams are in good nick quite solid beams i've lifted one out before and tell you they're pretty heavy all the anchor gear was stored under here uh, we're up in the tropics here in darwin so um, everything's stored away the best i could store it um, but here we've got a uh, what we call a sa anchor and then we've got a sand anchor both anchors have got uh, 20 meters of chain and then road um, this is the main road and then another another even longer road this this guy is quite long and then the tender anchor as well which is a little mini SA anchor but yeah all stored under the boat here stored away as best possible fenders stored under the boat anything rubber I'll sort of store down here in the cool and then we've got a pallet full of jerrys here which uh, which is our water storage on the boat you move weight around you can store it in any of those locker spaces and balance the boat out really nicely uh, the boat's due for bottom paint, so as you can see, the bum looks a little bit barnacle, a little yeah. bit messy. But she's, uh, I can assure you, it's sound. You can walk around and bash as much as you want. You're not going to find any issues with the hull. Um, she's she's really well built. All uh, West System epoxy and glass, the hull. But yeah, you need a but she needs bottom paint before she goes in the water. That's pretty much all she really needs prior going into the water. We've got the two rudders. Um, this is the trim tab for the um, for the Warren wind vane. So that's a bit of stainless kit. So, so this is a little 20 horsepower Yamaha four stroke um, high thrust prop um, and the transducer for the, for the depth sounder and the motor carriage which goes up out of the water. Yeah, it's this, down at the this, moment. this whole carriage goes up and the motor tilts up and everything clears the water. So when you're sailing along, you have no drag and um, nothing hanging in the water to hook up uh, cray pots or, or anything like that. So this is our little, uh, our little tender. She's a beauty. Twin tracks. Uh, it's a little workhorse. Um, it's light, we pull that up on the front. It's quite light, as you can see. Uh, we can drag her up on the bow quite easily little eight, eight horsepower Yamaha two-stroke. So that planes with Han and I and all our dive gear and fishing gear in it. Planes quite easily with two. Like me and two girls I've been planing as well. Definitely with two people it planes quite easily. Uh, obviously depending on weight 
But being a flat bottom, she gets up and boogies quite easy. Really forgiving when you're going into the shore with barnies and stuff like that. Alright guys, she's up for sale on Gumtree. Yeah, we take a lot of pride in this boat and we've really tried to look after the best we can and um, we're definitely going to miss her, but she's been an amazing uh, adventure so far and yeah, we just hope that someone wants to take on the adventure and take her on and have as much fun as we've had with her. It's a really solid boat, she's really forgiving, super easy to sail and um, yeah, she was a great first boat for someone um, or second boat or third boat. You got it wrong the first time, but uh, yeah, I can't complain with her at all. Like she's been amazing to us, and we've done uh, quite a few miles on her now. Sailed halfway around the country over five years, and uh, and uh, we've seen some amazing places on her. And and she's been plenty of places that most boats don't go. Really shallow draft. We draw 700. Um, we've sailed up, 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 and up and down quite a few times. The inside of the Ningaloo Reef. Um, gone plenty of places where most other boats, even catamarans, don't go because uh, but she can get in there. Yeah, so all the infantry is up on Gumtree and uh, yeah, if you want to check her out, get in touch and... Located in Darwin, on the hard. Yeah, kangaroo, she's a beaut. I know you feel it 